Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Tammy. This is Plant Living Made Easy with Tammy and Sia. Hello. Hey, Sia. I'm hey, loving Tammy. your necklace. Thank you. Thank you. It was a very special gift once upon a time. I, I like the colors of it. I, like I do too. It looks magical. Thank you. Thank you very you're, much. How are welcome. you doing today, my friend? How are you feeling? I'm, I'm doing well. And you? Feeling good, feeling good, yes. feeling excited about uh, sharing some time with our boys later on and talking about what we're going to be talking about today, which is food. I love talking about food. So. I know. It's so fun, isn't it? That's Oh, yeah. Well, we, you know, everything revolves around food and meals and what have you. So, um, so you guys, this is um, week two of an eight-week series that Sia and I are doing um, called Plant Living Made Easy. And we have a different topic each week that we will be discussing. And um, you have um, the opportunity to ask us questions in the chat. We would just ask that you would preface your questions with uh, two or three question marks and end with two or three question marks. And that will just help those pop out at us. And, um, and then you know, we'll answer them as quickly as we can when we see those pop up there. And this is an interactive um, program. So we want your participation. Don't be shy. And I see we have lots of people on already. Welcome, Can everyone. We yeah. So it's today, we're, we're, go ahead, see it. It's wonderful. Well, there, it's, people are saying hello in the chat room and meeting, and it's like we're all just getting together for a lovely little family reunion here. About absolutely, absolutely. About well, yeah. loving it. Like we talked about last week about how important community is, um, and yeah. this is this is one aspect of community. This is a wonderful online community, and what's really been interesting in the years. Um, since we've had our YouTube channel, is that the people that have come together in the chat have become friends. And many of them have now gotten together actually in person, you know, which is really fun. And we know like Kathy Taylor, um, she's traveled to California and met up with people that she's met online. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a really cool thing. Technology has allowed us to meet people that we otherwise our lives would never have crossed. That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. Um, and it is absolutely so very, very true for one person in particular right now. Me, I live in Greece. So Jacqueline from Portugal. Hello. So nice. it's important. So we're from all over the place. And yeah, without this community and, you know, you guys are mostly in the States. I feel like I have, you know, I have a tribe. I have a community in all of you. And I think that's beautiful. It's it. And it helps my life be happier and more joyful. Yep. It enriches it. It absolutely does. I yeah. love that everybody's putting where they're watching from. That's really I fun. love it. Too. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, so C is in Greece. And for those of you who um, maybe are visiting here for the first time with me, I'm in Northern California and um, I've been plant-based since 2013 and have had my YouTube channel for a number of years and just love being able to share about this lifestyle um, with other people. I, I guess our Tom's and my motivation, my husband Tom and I, our motivation is to try to make it easier for people. Um, there wasn't as much information out about this lifestyle back in 2013, but man, has it exploded since then. There's just so, so many more books, so many more doctors are on board with it. There's so much more um, content that's available online for us. And it's just, it's a, it's wonderful to be um, on the ground floor of this kind of grassroots um, movement to educate people about a whole food plant-based lifestyle. And with that today, um, Sia and I thought it would be really fun to talk about what a typical day of eating looks like. Although Sia, I have to say, when I was thinking about this, I thought, well, 
you know, things change, right? Um, yeah, that's I mean, the thing. You know, it's a tricky do, question. What do you it is. typically eat in a day? Um, I don't know. I don't know. And, 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 and not to be like, you know, like all kind of snarky about it, but honestly, it changes every day. There are certain things that I do when I eat, like there are days I don't eat. So typically every day is nothing because there are days where there is no food present. So when there are days where there are no food present, but on the days when the food is there, there are a few things that I try to make sure I get on those days. And then I try to get as much diversity of everything else as I can on those days. So I don't lather, rinse, repeat. So I am getting diversity so that my critters in my digestive system will be well fed and I will have more of them. So typically is more like food ideas, ways to put foods together. For me, I'm speaking about like my typical day. Um, so yeah, it's a difficult question. But like you and Tom have this amazing system of your chopped salads. And I wish I had a refrigerator big enough to do 14 salads like that. But, you know, with the containers and things. And, and I do hope you find good containers again. But that's an amazing thing. So you guys have a salad every day. So that's something you do every day. Is that right? We do. So um, we typically eat two meals a day. Um, and, and, you know, we can talk about how, how that arrived. Um, but we eat two meals a day and lunch is our first meal of the day. And that for me, it's usually um, the chopped salad. Sometimes Tom has the chopped salad for lunch and sometimes he saves it for later in the day. And that was a principle that I learned from Dr. Joel Furman back in 2013. Actually in 2012, I first heard about him, bought his book and read it, but I didn't make the transition to this lifestyle until 2013. And one of his philosophies is to make one meal a day of a big salad. He says, remember, salad is the main dish. And so we started doing that. Now, that doesn't mean that you're just eating vegetables because that would not provide enough satiety. And so, um, you know, we add uh, beans, tempeh, tofu, some kind of a grain, maybe potatoes, fruit, flax, chia, um, you know, a wide variety of things. Uh, usually we try to have a little bit of a probiotic in there, um, maybe some um, sauerkraut or um, beets that we've uh, had soaking in vinegar, something that we learned from Sia. And, um, you know, we just try to incorporate that meal to be really um, nutrient dense and fiber rich and have a wide variety. And so one day last week I counted up, I had 34 different plants in that one meal. Well Isn't done, that plant I warrior know. goddess, plant <laughs> warrior goddess, that's it. I mean, it was um, just crazy. And so I'm not, I'm not thinking every day when I'm making that, you know, well, how many plants do I have in this? It has just evolved over time. And so we have our base salad that we make, and we have a video that you can watch on um, how to batch prep the salad. So we have that basic salad. It also video. changes. Yeah. The, the greens that are in it changes depending on what's available and what looks good at the um, store. But um, And then we add other things to it on the day that we make it, and we like to chop it because it just it reduces the volume of that great big salad makes it you know a little bit easier um to chew it doesn't look as massive and so then if you're eating with somebody else <laughs> they they you know their eyes don't pop out of their head because of the size of the salad that you're eating um <laughs> and it, you, you know because people well, even like my mom when i go and stay with my mom or she comes here you know she'll say how do you eat all of that <laughs> Right. It is because a lot of food. Sure. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot 
it is a lot of food, but it's low calorie density and it's full of fiber and water, which is really filling. And then, you know, we add the good carbs to it, which is satiating. And so, and like you said, then we're feeding that gut biome. We're getting tons of nutrients and antioxidants. And there's a saying to eat, eat the rainbow. And basically what that means is try to have a um, broad spe spectrum of colorful fruits and vegetables included every day because all of them are going to have different um, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, um, things that our body needs. And so there, you know, it is good to have variety. So although we have our basic salad mm -hmm. um, base, we're adding different ingredients to it every day to just try to change um, and get a, a wide variety. So, so that's what I usually have for lunch. What do you, do you eat breakfast? So, do you eat lunch? So that's, but is that your, is that how you break your fast or is that your second meal of the day? No, that's lunch is the first meal of the day for us. So, so that's, that would so be. That's that's your breakfast. That's how that you break be, your fast. Yeah. yeah. So that could, that could qualify as breakfast for Well, us. it does because you see meal labels, uh, we only agree with one another that they have a time set to them. And the time set to breakfast, lunch, and dinner varies from culture to country to region. Mm -hmm. So let's not think about it as meal times, but meal orders. So breakfast, how do we break our fast, is the first thing we put in our mouths every day. So you and Tom break your fast, your breakfast is that beautiful, beautiful salad with 34 plants. So you just turn on your microbiome, you go zero to 60 like in go. So you must feel quite energized after that. So after that, do you have another meal later in the day? I wonder what does that look like, Tammy? Yeah, so um, yes, we usually do eat um, two meals a day. But, you know, like we're talking, typical. Because there's some days that I don't. Tom usually does eat two meals a day consistently. Um, but I, I think, you know, he needs more um, calories than I need. So okay. after having that really big salad, I usually don't need anything else to eat um, until later in the day. We, we also, we try to be done eating by 6.30 every day so that, you know, we have a, a good span of time before we go to bed. So what I have for that um, evening meal is lighter. My bigger meal is at noon, which I learned from Sia um, to do that. And so, <clears throat> so I'm having a smaller meal in the evening and it can be different like for a while you know we went for several months where we were having a smoothie um i would make us a big green smoothie or tom would make us a big green smoothie with lots of dark leafy greens and a little bit of fruit and some chia and flax and uh, sometimes hemp seeds and we were having that that was when the weather was warm and that was just you know kind of light refreshing um you know, we felt like we were sleeping better when we were doing that. Then, you know, as the weather gets colder and you kind of want something uh, warm. <clears throat> so sometimes I might have soup um, and I might have a little bit of salad. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sometimes I just have a plate of fruit. It just kind of depends. I, what I've tried to learn to do is listen to my body. What is it that I really want, right? Instead of all those years of feast and famine, yep, yep, all those years of feast and famine when I was a yo-yo dieter, um, I was eating according to the clock or according to what the program I was following said I should eat um, rather than listening to my hunger signals. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's how like not eating first thing in the morning went away for me because I thought, Am I eating because I'm hungry or am I eating because I think that this is when I should have breakfast? Mm. And so when I started paying attention to it, I thought, okay, I'm not actually hungry right now. I'm going to wait and see like, when am I really hungry? 
and ready to eat. And that happened to be, you know, um, around 1230. So that, you know, so then, so then I try to apply that to the rest of the day as well. Am I really hungry? What do I, what do I need? Sometimes it's a plate of fruit. Sometimes it's a bunch of raw veggies and a little bit of hummus. Sometimes it's a cup of soup. Um, you know, it can take different shape depending on the day. Sometimes how active it's a glass of water. Sometimes it's a glass of water because you're thirsty, yeah. not hungry. Yep, yeah, it can be. Yeah, absolutely, it can be. So, um, so what we do is we batch prep a lot of ingredients um, for the week. So our refrigerator is full of lots of different things that we can pull together to create a meal. So we oh, have okay. grains, we have potatoes, you know, we have all the fruits, the vegetables. Um, plus, we have uh, a wide variety of things that we keep in our freezer. So when I cook, you know, make a pot of chili or soup or whatever it is, I'll, if it doesn't make a big quantity, I'll double the recipe and then I'll freeze it in um, like two cup portions and put mm -hmm. it in the freezer so that we always have healthy food available that we can just um, grab and eat. You know, we try to make it simple. The, we try to make the easiest thing be also the healthiest thing. If that Excellent. makes sense. Of course. Yeah. Because if it's yeah. easily at hand, then you're more likely to grab it. So, um, you know, and, and, and I'm a big fan of batch cooking as well. So, and I make sure, and I'm a plant point counter. Thanks to Dr. Bolshevitz and like you 34 plant point warrior. There you go. So when I'm batch cooking, I'm looking to get, you know, 35 to 45 ingredients in every dish. So if I'm making a lentil stew, I'm getting 35 to 45 different plants in that stew. And I do that with different bases, different roots that I make with like sun-dried tomatoes or mushrooms and prunes. So you've always got some sort of fruit in there and you can sneak things in that you don't like. Like um, a lovely lady I know doesn't like mushrooms, but you can sneak in these mushrooms in these sauces. Um, and seaweed, seaweed isn't something that people normally, not a lot of people, let's say, eat on a normal daily routine. And we really should be. Sea vegetables are very powerful. So I sneak mine into my sauces and I blend them in there. So I'm making sure that I'm getting my iodine and then batch cook, just like you said, and then freeze it up. And so I know I've always got something to go to that is not only nutrient dense, but is also plant diverse so that I know that the meal is, is, is filling and, and making my, my critters very happy. I managed to get into the chat room and you were talking about the different colors on a plate and I posted a link. I don't know if it's accessible through the chat room or not. I'm not sure how this works yet, but if it is, it's just a little blog post that explains a little bit about what each color has in it and what it does for your body. So it's just a little bit of information. Don't think you're going on a deep dive here. It's just a little bit red equals this, yellow equals that. So if anyone was interested. It um, is showing up. It's showing up in the chat. So oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's highlighted. So we should be able to click on that. So okay, thank awesome. You. Yeah. Thank you for great. doing that. Yeah. yeah. So um so that's kind of what it looks like for me. Um what yeah. does what does a day when you're eating look like there for you? you? Perfect question. A day when I'm eating for me is um, uh, the beginning and the end are very similar to, the, to, uh, to each of those eating days. The beginning is a big glass of uh, broth or a full, uh, well, no, usually broth. Uh, just to rev up my system a little bit, get some electrolytes and just warm up my metabolism. But that's quickly followed by food. And the food is greens. So I eat leafy greens in the morning, uh, a variety of leafy greens with some pumpkin seeds, berries, some apple cider vinegar. And I try to get as many bitter leafy greens in that morning salad as I can. Um, things have gotten a little busy over the last couple of weeks. So I've been putting that salad in my Nutribullet and making a smoothie out of it. 
And then I add copious amounts of ginger and turmeric root and ginger root. Um, so I'm getting the whole plant there, right? Not just the spice. Um, and those are working out. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting turned on to that ease of that green smoothie, though. I know that we need to chew our food to release amylase in our mouths. So, so I do that. So I'm having greens. So then in the middle of the day is when I break. And that's when I break my off from work, from my morning work. And I'll have my meal. And that meal is a bed of greens or a bed of grains topped with one of these batch cooked meals that I've made. And so I warm that up. I pour it over the grains or the greens, and that's the meal. That varies. Depends. Depends what's in it. Depends what it is. But for sure, lots of plants and a lot of diversity. And then I end the day as calmly as possible because I want my body to get into its fasting state as quickly as possible. So I keep my, my evening meal as raw as possible, first and foremost, for faster digestion. And um, in the winter months, though, that's not always the best way. I like to add warm starches, uh, sweet potatoes, purple potatoes, on onto that evening salad, as I call it, with some fruit and some apples. And uh, just to kind of warm it up, but make sure if you're doing the starches, you put a little apple, you know, apple cider vinegar on top to cut that glucose, you know, that glycemic index. So then my body gets into a fasting stage more quickly. And I have a longer intermittent fasting window. I have a more optimal window. But what's in the middle always changes. But that's basically it. Well, Michelle, oh, I'm glad you like the link. Awesome. Thanks. Cool. Well. Since you were talking about um, having mostly raw foods in the evening, Tracy Reese has a question. Would you ever transition to eat all raw foods? Why or why not? Yeah, I saw that question. Tracy, I think that's awesome. And, um, and well, Tammy, I, I over here on a second screen, I brought up um, uh, the, the answer is no from me. Uh, and so why not is the question that you would really like the answer to because um, why not? Uh, it isn't optimal. It isn't optimal for our bodies. And Dr. Gregor, and this is what I was doing, Dr. Gregor has a wonderful video about exactly why raw diets, pure raw diets, are not perhaps your best option. I do, however, believe, uh, believe, think and agree with what Dr. Clabber teaches us that 75% of our food during the day should be raw. It's better, but we also need cooked foods. And there, there is a nutritional reason here as well. Raw cauliflower and cooked cauliflower have two different nutritional profiles, both of which our bodies need at different times. So it's important that we have a combination of those things. But I also think it's important to remember that when we're eating raw, and again, majority raw, majority raw, yes, I say yes to that, that we're providing our body a wonderful digestive resource because raw food is full of their own beautiful digestive enzymes and their own protective uh, elements that are protecting them and their antioxidants protected from predators and bugs. So they're really, really powerful. But we physiologically do require some cooked foods. Uh, you can eat grains and beans raw. It isn't an easy process. And if not done incorrectly, can be a dangerous and painful process. It can be done. But if people who are on an all raw diet are getting no grains and no beans, well, then it's not a balanced diet, um, in which case that would be the, the concern because it isn't balanced. In the transcript on the raw video diet um, that I did post the link, uh, there is something here. And I would just like to read it again. It's just it's Dr. Gregor. And he says, there's no good evidence that raw diets are superior to other whole foods, plant diets. In fact, the published evidence that does exist is fairly disappointing. The only dietary survey I'm aware of 
found raw food diets deficient in energy, protein, vitamins B12 and D, calcium, selenium, and zinc. That's a lot of stuff to not have enough of. Absolutely. So, so well, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I eat a lot of raw. Yeah, we should eat a lot of raw, but yeah. all raw, uh, the work is there. And don't forget, if you do go check out his video, check out those citations so that you can make sure the studies he's looking at, you know the parameters of the study. Remember, it is on us to get the proper information and make sure it's accurate and not just hype. Um, and, and raw is great. All raw, not great. But I understand why people are attracted to it. Tracy, um, I hope that answers your question. Um, I over answered it. You loved your cook and raw together. Yeah, me too, girl. Me, me too. too. Me too. Yeah. Me too. All right. I, I, would, so. I would miss, I would miss um, cooked potatoes and sweet potatoes and beans. And I, yeah. there's a, well, I mean, you can eat that stuff of, raw, though. You can eat those raw. No, I would miss I mean? it cooked. I know. Yeah, you miss the texture. And again, it's it's the idea, the psychology behind it. Um, and, and we talked a little, we mentioned a little bit about, or I just said, you know, that smoothies, all smoothies all the time, not a great way to go. Dee Dee Jones picked up on that. And uh, you make them thick and you incorporate some chewing as she takes it in. That is the way to do it. Remember, chew your juice, drink your food. What does that mean? chew every bite of solid food until it's liquid in your mouth and then swallow. And when you take a drink of anything, including water, mash your teeth together a couple of times and pretend you're chewing. Why? Because when we masticate, amylase is released in our mouths and digestion of glucose begins. So chew your juice, drink your food, Dee, Dee I'm with you all the way on that one. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. And so things change for us, uh, you know, depending on what we're doing, our activity level, how we're feeling. Um, and that affects how we eat and what we um, choose to eat. And I also don't try to be a perfectionist um, when it comes to all of that, because back in my yo-yo dieting days, I had, um, you know, the feast and famine and the all or nothing thinking going on. So if I couldn't be 100% perfect, and you know, then I thought I wasn't doing well. And then it was easy to decide to give in and, you know, um, sabotage myself and, and, you know, give it up. And so i would try to not have that kind of thinking anymore. Um, you know, if I have like Dr. Doug Lyle says, you know, it's okay if you have a B day, food wise, it doesn't always have to be an A plus. Oh, you know. man, you got to be living a B-plus life. Hey, hey, we don't <laughs> need to be overachievers. It's a B-plus life. You know, it's the excelsis um, mm -hmm. range there. We're living a B-plus life. You want to shoot for A-minus? Mm -hmm. Excellent. But B-plus, hey. that's pretty good. That's pretty a -plus good. A-plus people are annoying anyway. <laughs> well, we should bring on... We should bring on... Um, Dominic, we're going to let our husbands join us here, and we're going to find out what the guys eat in a day. Hi, Dominic. Hello, everyone. So good hey. to see you. So she just, you, you're in a different part of the house? Yes. Yeah. If we thought it would be better to see her be downstairs, me be upstairs. Nice. That works out great. Well, we're so glad that you were agreeable to join us and so that you and Tom can share the guy's perspective and talk about um, um, how you guys eat. So, um, Dominic, would you like to share with us what does a typical day of food look like for you? Um, it, it, de it depends whether it's the weekend or during the week, actually. Uh, let, let's take the week because that's most of the time. Um, Sia mentioned earlier she does batch cooking and preparation like you do, Tammy, as well. And she, she freezes a lot of meals. And we have grain and then we have the particular meal, you know, whether that's um, lemon uh, vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, or a, a chili, multi bean chili that she does. Um, and so we batch 
batch cook, pop it in the freezer, and then we take them out ready for the week and defrost them, ready to go and leave them in the fridge. Uh, what I usually take, um, I don't usually have anything in the, right in the morning when I wake up. I wait until I get into work to maintain my um, fasting window, if you like, which usually varies between 14 and 18 hours, somewhere around there, but usually 14 to 16 hours. Um, and then sometimes about 11, 11.30 in the morning, I'll have uh, a piece of cake or um, a, a cookie that Sia makes. They're all whole food, plant-based, of course. I'm not talking death by chocolate cake or anything <laughs> like that. Um, so I'm I'll have that. that you, I'm glad that you are pointing that out. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, it, you know, things, these things, these uh, lovely sort of cakes have, you know, red, made with red lentils, or if it's chocolate, it's got beans in it. You know, it, they're really tasty. Uh, so, yeah, it makes some really wonderful desserts, if you like, or sweets. So, I'll have that, and then just one of those. And then sometimes I eat quite late in the afternoon, so usually about three in the afternoon is roughly where I go and have my lunch downstairs in the office. And I'll be eating, you know, something like a chili with some grains, uh, three, usually see it cooks up three different grains, soaks them and then cooks them up. So we have those ready. Um, um, and then, uh, and those grains are probably the usual things that everybody knows about, but we have buckwheat and kamut uh, sometimes some brown rice, um, but mostly buckwheat, camut, um, um, and um, that. And then after that, usually about five or six o'clock, whilst I'm still at the office, I'll have some uh, fruit, which usually involves an apple, pear, couple of mandarins, um, and if I'm lucky, a banana. And if I'm lucky, a banana. <laughs> and why is that? Why? Why is the banana special? Um, we just went. I, I think it, it just, just for me, the banana is is um, they're just so tasty. Uh, I, I like apples and pears and mandarins, but but um, the bananas are just you know completely different. You know, they're nice and 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 uh, sweet and um, um, I. I very different consistency from the other three fruits. Right. That's wonderful. I love it. So does Sia do all the cooking? Do you do any any cooking? It, Sia does all the cooking. I I help out in, in preparation a bit. Um, um, my, my specialty is preparing garlic. <laughs> so, um, right. you no, are no, Sia, Sia's You're, the... I'm she is the creative um, and uh, provider. She does all of the, the cooking um, and it, it, it's really uh, fine cooking too. Well, it is. We, we have been lucky enough to have her food and it is delicious. And I absolutely love her chocolate cake and then the sauces that she makes to go on the chocolate cake. And I'm so jealous that you get to have that like every day, every week. Like I'll make you... We had I'll make you even soup. more jealous. It is oh, the, oh, yeah, you're going to tell me makes the most amazing um, chocolate pudding sauce uh, with oh. beans uh, primarily uh, and raw cacao and vanilla, cinnamon. Uh, and we have that. You just literally spoon it on and pour it over uh, fresh berries. So some blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, sometimes some strawberries. And that that's a real that's that's a real treat and also a powerhouse. Uh, and, and we'll sometimes have that. Um, we'll, we'll have that in in the evening. That and that's it. Amazing. And that's it. Amazing. Okay, so Dominic, how long have you been eating whole food, plant based? Um, I, I would whole food, plant based. Uh, probably say about two years now. Um, we've been transitioning for longer than that. But mm -hmm. I, I would say properly for at least two years, possibly three, between that, somewhere between that. So when you first started out, did you just make a, you were making a gradual change 
to yes. like, vegan food and then? Well, yes. I mean, um, I, I think we left we left you know things like meat and 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 dairy behind quite early uh, we still had a bit of uh, of dairy in, in the transition but that was a, a long time ago now um uh, but meat i definitely that was one of the first things to go and of course um, no seafood apart from seaweed uh uh either so um yeah Okay, great. Did you have any health issues before you started eating the way you eat now? Um, not, not that I, not that I recall. No, I mean I, I've always been fairly active. Um, done a lot of running in my life, uh, um, but um, no, I, I didn't have any any lingering health concerns or you know underlying conditions or anything. Um, but, but what I have found is, is that going to whole food plant-based um, um, or at the very least being vegan um, is, is has helped me. Um, I, I feel fitter, I feel sharper. Uh, my brain seems to work a bit quicker, um, although sometimes I see it will say it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I generally feel very, very healthy. Um, and, and whilst I don't I'm not advocating not exercising. I, I don't do much exercise at the moment. That, that will change soon because Sierra and I are planning on running um, a, a 10 kilometer race in November. So we'll work up to something. But, but um, yeah, on this diet, you can, um, you, you feel a lot better. Let's put it that way, because you don't have the inflammation. You don't have the indigestion. You don't have heartburn. Um, it, it, it's just simple as that. Yeah, and so were you always naturally thin then too? I, I've been, yeah, I've, I've, I was lucky. Um, I'm a, I, what do you what do you call a? Uh, is it an ectomorph or an endomorph? I can't, endomorph, isn't it? But if you're thinner or, or wiry, uh, wiry, but I've been lucky. Yeah, yeah I, I've, I've most I've been lucky. I don't put on weight very easily. Oh, you're so fortunate. I I wish I had that. But I didn't. I didn't get those genes. <laughs> those were not what I got at all. So, um, so when you well, we'll talk about that too. We'll talk about eating out because I was going to ask about like colleagues. Um, how do you handle your work environment? Eating, you know, differently than most people eat. It's um, <laughs> is it a challenge for you? Yeah. It, it, well. Um... A little bit. I, I look, I mean, nobody should feel sorry for me. I, I just have to tell um, the, the lady in the office who organises uh, dinners or lunches or whatever when we have to meet um, the ship owners uh, out uh, what, what I need. And usually that means without explaining and going into a huge amount of detail is saying um, I need vegan food because trying to explain whole food plant based to people is, is, is not really an option in these circumstances um right. my, my boss my boss tends to pick um meat restaurants which isn't great um but they always in the end um, turn out um you know courses for me vegan courses which is great not the best um preparation because you you're in a meat restaurant so you know your food's being prepared right next door to you uh, and you know, meat and other things going in there that you don't want. But they, the ones I've, I've been, the dinners I've been to recently, I haven't really detected any signs of, of, of contamination from dairy or anything like that. So they, they seem to do it on a separate workstation in the kitchen, it seems. But that's, that's just me guessing and tasting. Right. Well, that's nice. And um, since you're in Greece, there's a lot of olive oil. Are you able to order things without <laughs> oil? It, it, it's difficult. You get some very strange looks. Uh, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, but, but it, it, as Sia knows, you can go to a, a traditional Greek taverna, which will be serving meat or fish or whatever. And, you know, they've got lots of oil there on, on, on salads and everything. But you can ask them not to put the oil yes. on. Yeah. For example, you know, a, the world famous Greek salad, 
um, horiatic is we say here with you know red onions raw you know tomatoes cucumbers little couple of bits of olives and capers in it and um, they would usually put feta on that and olive oil and um, but you can ask them no feta and no cheese that is and no olive oil so you know it, it, it's it's easy to do and it's easy for the people in their tavernas and restaurants to do as well yeah and they do it and they're really nice about it like they're yeah. confused but they'll do it they'll do it yeah <laughs> they're like wait a second you're in green they're very, they're, it's very confusing it's very confusing that's for sure yeah 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 definitely. yeah i'm sure well, thank you so much for sharing. Let's let's um, see what Tom eats. What does a typical day of eating look like for you? Um, Eighty percent of what I consume in a day is either going to be um, Tom's famous dump soup, and what that looks like in a day is either is going to this. be yeah, I love that. Oh. and. And it has, has I'm going to blow it up because it has a lot and, of uh, what that looks like. Is either going to this. Yeah, I love that. Um, and that and it has, I'm going to blow it up because it has a lot of what that looks like. Guys, guys. Yeah, I love that. And it has, the sound went away. Oh, it has a lot of what that looks like. Guys, guys. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I know why. Hold on. And part of yeah, it and goes back here. Um, whatever's playing on your computer, we can hear and hear Tom talking at the same time. Okay, how about now? Is there something playing on the computer? No, it's just you now, sweetheart. Okay, well, you can okay. just talk about your soup. You don't have to okay. show the picture. So Thank that, you, I'll soup. Like pretty soup. It's such a nice soup. Okay. <laughs> I've, got, I've got the fix for this. There, there, you know, what we were hearing was the... Uh, um was the actual okay now it's off now i have the sound turned off there is no sounds now so we should be able to go back here okay. let me know okay. how is that see ya that sounds so, good yeah sorry okay. to have interrupted you but it was uh no, no. Okay. yeah so that thing's so. loaded with a bunch of goodies uh you know two cups of water the noodles uh some dried uh european mushrooms the brussels sprouts i put a half of an onion in there uh, I mentioned the carrots earlier. I uh, love to add a couple, two or three celery stalks to it. It fills a two quart. That's a two quart Corel bowl that you see in that thing. And I, I really wind up coveting that meal. I mean, um, what's the phrase you use that the, you crave what you're in the, the, you crave your, what you habitually your, eat. You, yeah. Your habits become your mm, cravings. Sure. And along about 11 o'clock ago, Oh, I didn't make the dopamine rush is already starting just thinking <laughs> about, about the dump soup. So, you know, so it's got the starch in there and, you know, minimal or unprocessed. Of course, it's quite cooked. I do do a, uh, a four minute steaming in an instant pot of this. It's not boiled or pan fried. You could throw it all in a pan and saute it, but I really like that fresh steamed flavor, especially the way it deals with the the uh oh in that bowl before i dump all those veggies out what's underneath are two heads of bok choy and then the the cubes half of a uh, how many ounces is a half one of those uh tofu Six, cubes 16 ounce tofu well half of or it so eight ounces eight ounces or so yeah. yeah i mean i do half of a half oh about so four you get about four, four ounces, ounces of tofu so and so that's a luscious little tidbit in there so just really so enjoyable i use Mrs. Dash seasoning on it. You can use any seasoning on it you want and change it up that way, just like Tammy changes up her salads with all the different toppings that she uses. So, and the recipe is on the blog. Yeah, Tom's dump if, soup. If you Google nutmeg <laughs> dump, soup, dump soup in that order, the blog post will come up. You also get a sneak peek inside uh, our studio, our kitchen um, video studio, on that same blog post. Uh, the other thing, and I have that, you know, I said 80% or the, the other uh, uh, meal for dinner typically is a chopped salad. I don't make them as fancy as Tammy does, but I'm putting in all the same stuff, which is this endless list of vegetables that you kind of. Oh, you put more stuff in yours than I do mine. I yeah. mean, as far as quantity. 
right. you put he, <laughs> you know, because he he eats he needs a much bigger yeah, yeah. salad so, than so, I do. So this is a close up of dinner, and so I can't even begin to list what is all in that. But um, but if you watch any of Annie's chop salad videos, or if you have her chop salad course, you'll know what's in there. But it's uh, yeah, I throw everything in there that I can get also to fit. And when I'm done loading it up, it does include rice. My, I add the starch, a grain. And Tammy does have like oat groats around. I prefer the brown rice. Um, and, uh, and then I add beans. some sunflower seeds. I add some black beans typically. I add a couple of tablespoons of edamame because edamame is fun. That's a little discovery that you get on an occasional bite. And that I also love to dice up the celery. We did it. I did this on what video? We just did a video of me making the salad. Uh, Saturday, maybe, or Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So it was. it's a long video, but somewhere in there is me uh, prepping my salad and chopping it. Um, so it, it's another big meal. What I like about the salads is every bite is, is a different little flavor explosion. And you get to eat for a long time. Uh, I heard you ladies talking earlier about, uh, Tammy's talking about, watching the clock and then, or counting calories or uh, waiting so many hours before you eat again, you, you get this food, you get to eat it for as long as you want, half an hour, 40 minutes, you're grazing on it. So you're getting this constant hand to mouth satiation of getting to chew, bite and swallow stuff. And then when you're done, you're completely satiated, but you're not bloated. You're not over full. It's not at all the same feeling I used to get 12 years ago coming out of a steakhouse where you would eat all this animal stuff and then you would just feel like crap afterwards. You, you feel, wow, that was a really big meal. And you know what? I don't feel like I'm weighted down by it. Um, so anyway, those two meals are something I look forward to every day and have most days. As you know, I live right near the Nutmeg Notebook kitchen and there's always, <laughs> so let's get back to, uh, Let's get back to our group. View. So you always have healthy options yeah, so, that are so available. There's usually other recipes under development or, or uh, like Dominic mentioned on the weekends, there's usually a family, a family dynamic, <laughs> a family dynamic that might be coming into play where Tammy's prepping for something to go uh, to our, our daughter's house. So there are other foods that come into play there. Of course, they're all whole food plant-based. There'll be some gluten-free pastas in that mix. There'll be some special desserts, um, soups. Uh, in the winter time, um, I might sub out uh, some of those salads and, and, and add in more soups, usually with grains added, like Dominic mentioned. So, Well, sometimes for like dinner, if you're going to have some pasta or something, if we've, I don't make pasta very often, but if we have a family meal, then I'll make mm. pasta because, you know, that's something that the kids and the other relatives will eat. But so then Tom will chop his salad, but he won't add all the other stuff yeah, to no, it. He'll keep yesterday. it. Yeah. He'll yeah. keep it smaller. You know, pastas are you know rich and, and, and they make you want them and then you eat them and they're a fast eat and then you're done and you're not satisfied. Even if you eat a pretty healthy load on the plate. Cause it's too processed. And so, uh, and I, you know, we had a family event this last weekend. Tammy made the, a gluten-free pasta. There was leftovers. I made the big plate. And you know what? This is, even though it looked like a pile, I knew it wasn't going to satisfy. And so I grabbed an entire uh, batch prep salad, chopped it up, threw some leftover Caesar dressing on it. And then when I added, you know, nine cups of greens to the pasta, then I was satisfied. And of course. I got to catch the... If I'm not eating for 25 minutes, I'm probably not happy. I don't want to, I don't want to do, you know, 15 years ago, I used to go through the drive through and, and scarf a sandwich on the road in between client appointments. That's how I got to almost 200 pounds. Um, and, and then, and then I, I became educated here in the Nutmeg Nova kitchen and I stopped doing that. So good. I'm glad anyway. you did. Um, you know, I, I will, I would add a footnote because people that perhaps have been following us for years know that I used to be in the habit of an every morning oat, banana, blueberry, chia seed, hemp seed breakfast. 
and as you recall, March of last year, we went through an intermittent fasting course with you. And I found that that was uh, a habit of enjoyment, but it wasn't a need because after we got done with the intermittent fasting thing and we, and we closed our eating window to, you know, a six to seven hour window, 1230 to seven ish, 12 to six 1230 to six 30, 1230 to six 30. Um, then the next day it wouldn't occur to me to want the oat breakfast. I still get my grains and my starches in that eating window, but I was no longer uh, trapped in the habit of having to have those oats or, oh my goodness, my day was going to end and I would probably die by noon. <laughs> it, it, that just in that intermittent fasting exercise, that mental bridge, that mental crutch got torn down which was, I, I'm still kind of amazed at now that, um, you know, Dominic mentioned bananas. A banana was every part of that. And now we buy, we used to buy three bunches of bananas a week. And now you buy one bunch and you wind up freezing, freezing part them. of it. So yeah. uh, I do go after the pears for dessert. Tammy keeps pears around and I really like pears. Apples. I don't know why. And then apples, you know, if I'm wanting something, then I'll go for the fresh fruit. So, so that's my day. It's, you know, it's all low fruit. It's all here. It's what, what you have in your house is what you eat. If you have good stuff in your house, then you'll eat good stuff. So I am fortunate that I, 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 I do have good stuff to eat. Now, I am responsible for cooking all of the perfectly granular brown rice that Tammy can want to eat. That is my official job. I am the rice cooker in this family. And then I, I I don't do so much prepping, but somehow I get caught up in the aftermath of another yeah. spree and wind up washing dishes for an hour <laughs> and drying them and Thank putting them you. away, especially during the YouTube show. We'll work for food. So, yeah. so things get a little crazy when that kind of thing is going on. So I get, I get, oh my goodness. Oh, look at these counters, you know, so. Do you have any questions for him, Sia? Anything I didn't, that we he didn't cover? No, oh, man, he's doing great. And, you know, and I love the, the, that switch from, from having that heavy um, oat protein first thing in the morning in your system. Your stomach isn't ready for it. And it doesn't have the requisite molecules to break down that protein. So you're more likely to have slower digestive issues, blockages, things like that. You know, oatmeal is a beautiful food, especially oat groats, not oat flakes, not rolled oats. Mm -hmm. Oat groats is what I'm talking about, not steel cut oat groats. I think it's beautiful and I love oat groats. Um, I just, I, I, I love them in my body when my body's ready to receive that heavy protein. And first thing in the morning, it's just a really difficult thing. It's like getting in your car uh, for people who like live in like really cold climates, sometimes your car in the morning is really, really cold and you go out there and you, if you live in a safe place, you turn your car, well, we did when we were kids, you turn your car on, you go back in the house and finish getting ready. So it would warm up for 15 minutes because you didn't want to, you know, go from an ice cold engine block to running it on gas and then it burn, you know, it, it damages it. Well, your digestive system is the same. You can't go from ice cold to, to run in around the block and run in all over the place. You got to warm it up. You got to take it slow. You got to prep it and let it know. So it's really cool. And congratulations on all that weight loss. That's amazing. I don't think I actually knew that, that you were over 200 pounds at one point. Well, no, I was approaching. That, that he was wasn't the, over. The warning bell. Uh, not uh, over approaching. Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> at, at, at 195, um, the, the alarm sirens started uh started going off so it, it, yeah i was in an office about uh, you know i'll tell i've told the story before i was in my office still working at the time and i walked into one of my peers cubicles and he was sitting in his desk chair and i was standing in the entry of his cubicle so he's kind of like looking up at me they said oh tom been having a few beers so <laughs> <laughs> he's looking up at your belly at my belly so wow. it's like well 
uh, and some McDonald's and some Taco Bell and and some yeah. uh, Royal Red Robin and a few other things that probably aren't so healthy. And so that was and like and then. You know, a slap in the face. And so then yeah. and then and then I started you know absorbing some of the materials Tammy was making available, and lost you know um, uh, forty pounds of of that uh, of that weight. So the, the other thing that um, I would make note of is in that process byproducts of eating a whole food plant-based healthy uh, menu is uh, lifetime long chronic migraines disappeared uh, wow. uh, and decades long chronic debilitating knee pain disappeared and uh, chronic back debilitating pain. lower back pain disappeared and uh, th those pain you know those joint issues and back issues have to do with how the, uh, uh, an oil-free diet allows your vascular system to function, not just your vascular system, but how your lymph system, move, how, how fluids move through your body and get toxins and, and waste and bad stuff out of those cartilage areas and out of those inflammation areas and processed out of your body. So, uh, sure. so I can do, you know, in terms of, uh, I cut down a, 40 foot tall, uh, 18 inch diameter birch tree this last week. I, you know, oh, with my grandfather's ax, with my 55 CC Husqvarna rancher chainsaw, uh, of course, some big pruners. And I, I had it all wired and stuff and I felled it into our backyard and I cut it up and it's incrementally going into the dumpster to go to the city waste. How many 70 year old guys get to cut down full grown trees in their own backyard because they're fit yeah, enough? Right. Fit there enough you go. I mean, that's there it. That's it. You know, I Tammy says, "Are you feeling all manly, man?" I says, "Yeah, I am. I got to use my axe. Got to use my chainsaw." <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's hey, a question for you, Tom. You lumberjack. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right, um, Dominic. Exactly. Elizabeth. Elizabeth has a question for you. She wants to know, Tom, have you noticed a difference in digestion without having oats for breakfast? Um. Not really, because I get so many of the other grains. Uh, what I notice in digestion is if I don't have my dump soup, don't have my salad, uh, and and if we go if we get off like we had those family dither, dinners, family dithers, family dither. <laughs> it wasn't a family dither. It was a family dinner. Um, it's when I eat the non-vegetable stuff, the stuff that's not a good mix, because your soups are a good mix of vegetables. And I'm mixing the grains with them so that my system is just like the warm engine she is talking about humming along smoothly. When I introduced some processed, even though it's vegan, oil free, whatever, then that upsets the apple cart. Um, but no, I don't I don't really notice, uh, uh, you know, I don't have a, a missing of the oats. But, you know, Tammy has the oat muffins, like if we if we eat our salad for dinner and then she might have an oat muffin for dessert, you know, so, so I'm still getting oats here and there. There you go. So anyway. So we were going to also talk, we touched a little bit about um, eating out for you guys in um, Greece. So do you want to expand on that at all? Do you, you know, see it, do you allow yourself to eat out? Of course I allow myself to eat out. <laughs> of course oh, I me. do. I know people who don't. I know people yes. who don't. Yes, but um, food is it, it's such a social thing in 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 Greece, and it's 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 very important. So of course I go and I eat out, um, and I will. I'm not going to a steakhouse. You know what I mean? We're going to local yeah. Greek restaurants. And a lot of Greek food, like Dominic was saying, is is vegan. It's yeah. very naturally just vegan. And like Dominic said, if you tell them to leave the oil off, they'll leave the oil off. So inevit inevitably at any Greek restaurant, you're going to find four or five different kinds of salads on offer. And these are nice, big, really nice, good sized salads. You'll find two or three different bean dishes. You're going to find about two different kinds of boiled leafy greens because we eat that at every, at most meals in Greece. 
You'll find boiled vegetables, uh, steamed vegetables with no sauce on them. So yeah, I let myself go out to eat for sure. And if I have a little bite of um, some fava beans that have a little olive oil in them and some salt, I'm okay. The next day I'm just going to have a little extra flax to get that oil through. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm living a B plus life. I'm like you said earlier, I'm not looking to be perfect, Dominic, right? I mean, we're not, we're not looking to be perfect. We're looking to be better. And we just want to be better than we were because of what we now know. The more we learn, the better we become. So for what we know now, I think we do all right. What do you think, Dominic? Yeah, I, I, I do think we do okay uh, uh, on a B plus basis. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm shooting for it. A plus plus or anything above a B plus. I, I mean, yes, sometimes we might do an A, A minus, but no, I, it's just generally the, the, the feeling, both both in, um, in 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 intelligence in your brain and then, and then your body as well. It just is much better, it's so much better uh, than um, you know four or five years ago. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so sure. you know, there's a saying that it isn't what we do occasionally that's going to have the biggest impact on our health. It's what we do consistently. And that's so, it. right. And so we are, the four of us are consistently eating healthy on um, a regular basis. And so, you know, we don't eat out a ton, but um, when we oh, do, yeah. we are very fortunate where we live here in Northern California that there's probably about six restaurants here that um, actually have no oil, um, vegan, no oil menus. It's not going nice. to be sodium free. We have a, a one place that you can call ahead the day ahead and they'll make mm. not only oil free, but also um, salt free. Right. But, you know, salt's not an issue for um, Tom and I. We don't have any, we've never had any like hypertension or or anything like that. And so we're okay if we have a meal that is higher in sodium than what I would fix at sure. home. And sure. so, you know, we go and, um, you know, we'll go to the vegan restaurants and, and um, we're able to eat really pretty, pretty clean um, at the ones that we go to. And occasionally, you know, we have to go with somebody else to a different type of restaurant. And my idea is it's one meal. That one meal doesn't have to be um, like um, anything that I eat at home. It, I, can, I can get a plain salad at a restaurant. If that's like the cleanest thing that I can get there, I'll get a plain salad. I'm okay. It's one meal. I, you know, I can eat beans sure. or something when I get home. Um, another thing that I learned from just doing intermittent fasting, which I know we're going to talk about, is that hunger is not an emergency, you know, so it's definitely when, not an emergency. It's definitely right? not an emergency. Yeah, no, for sure. We're not starving. Really, we're not. No, we're okay. not at all. We, and we've, so, we've all got a few reserves in there. And, and you're right. It's not about perfection. And Dominic's right. It's not about, you know, trying to get it right all of the time. Um, I just want to add one little caveat. Um, when I am in a, when I, when I put myself into a program, then it is a hundred percent compliance. Yeah. Because, um, the, when, when I'm approaching and breaking fasting, things like that, it's very, very important to pay attention to the details. But, um, you know, like you said, you know, if, we don't go out a lot. I mean, to be honest, maybe once a month, you know, if, if that, you know, but uh, for dinners, you know, we do other things, go for walks with friends, bike rides, you know, and meet for a juice or a talk, things like that. Have people over for dinner, which we did last weekend. And and then we have more control over it. So, so yeah, so we go yeah, out, but not as much as we used to. 
Yeah, it's a good balance. So, so absolutely, I agree with you. When we're doing the modified fasting, modified fasting program, then we adhere um, to it a hundred percent because the whole idea of doing it is to um, better your health, improve what your body's capable of doing, and um, right. you need to adhere to it. So, you want to talk a little bit about modified uh, modified fasting programs and what that is for the people who don't know? Can well, the modified that? fasting programs that, that you're referring to are at 60 Living. They're 10-day programs where you receive, you know, a menu protocol. It's all very restrictive. You have, you have to make certain foods, eat them at certain times. Uh, you practice intermittent fasting every day during the 10 days. And you do two prolonged fasts where you'll go from anywhere from 36 to 44 hours twice during those 10 days. It's an intense program, um, but it's, it's a powerful program. It's powerful because of the fasting. It's powerful because of the community. It's powerful because of the food combinations. But you don't have to do a modified fasting program for 10 days and, you know, and get locked in on something like that. Just the daily practice of intermittent fasting brings such enormous benefit to your body, homeostasis, your digestion, your body's ability to know when to use calories and nutrients, when not to use calories and nutrients. All of this is only achieved when we listen to our body's natural digestive cycle. And that is what intermittent fasting is. It's just our natural physiological digestive cycle. Our, when we're eating, when we're in a, what we call a fed state, when we're putting food in our mouths, our sympathetic nervous system is activated. We don't want to live in sympathetic nervous system land forever, for many, many hours every day, because that's everything's firing, everything's on alert. When we rest, when we stop eating, we're not feeding, our parasympathetic nervous system is activated. And that's why we call that the rest and digest stage. If our body is not allowed to spend adequate time in the parasympathetic nervous system being activated in that state, enough time in that state, one, you won't digest your food properly, hormones won't be metabolized or used properly, you will have fluctuations in your serotonin as well. Um, you will have more cortisol released because of the high uh, sympathetic nervous system activation. All of this leads to dis-ease in the body. It's more than just the food. It's more than just the, di the digestion. It's our body's natural physiological state to eat a certain time period and to rest a certain time period. That time period is up to each of us, which hours we eat, which hours we fast, right? Which we don't eat. That's all that is. It's just not eating, drinking water. We decide those hours. We decide those hours according to our lifestyle, what fits our schedule, what fits our activity, um, what we're comfortable with. And you start slow. You don't have to start, again, don't start that engine at 60. Start slow. If you're not practicing intermittent fasting on a regular basis, start with the 12-12. And then build from there. And build your fasting hours up from there nice and slow. It's, it's not a theory. It's not an idea. It's physiological science. It's just the way the body works. So... Again, like you were saying, Tammy, you did all those fad diets and everything, and finally you just started listening to your body. Once we start listening to our bodies, we'll do the right thing. When we let go of, but I really love this thing, but I really like having this one thing at this one time, let it go. That's your brain. That's not your body. We often, our brain is here and our body is here and we want our brain. We're like, but I love it. It's my routine. I always do that. It's my favorite thing. It's my favorite way. And your body says, I have a headache. My muscles cramp. 
Um, my poop isn't so good today. Uh, it's telling you something. All of those things are telling you something. So what we need to do is take the brain and the body and bring them together. So they're speaking the same language and then they can live happily ever after. The end. I like it. I like it. Well, you know, we feel, we feel better doing the daily intermittent fasting. And so um, what that looks like for us is we do what's called an 18-6. And so we have a six-hour feeding window, 12.30 to 6.30. And then we have 18 hours of um, water only. So we only are consuming water during that um, other time. And I just feel better. I like to exercise first thing in the morning. Um, it's much easier and more pleasurable to exercise on that empty stomach. You burn more fat. when It's more optimal. Right. It's more right. optimal. You recover more quickly. Your, your lean muscle builds faster. You burn more fat. Uh, exercising in fasting state is more optimal. And then those who RSVP'd and got the goodies have articles on all of this information for intermittent fasting. So I hope you enjoy those articles, you guys who signed up and, and, and got those goodies because it's it's really important to understand what intermittent fasting can do for your body. So I'm so glad that you exercise without food in your system. Exercising yeah. with food in your system is not a no-no. It's not like, no, no, no. It's just a different result. And it's yeah. often a result that you're not exercising for. It's a very different result. That's all. Yeah. So we just, we feel better. And then just having that larger gap between um, the last time that we eat in the evening before we go to bed, you know, just fewer digestive issues, um, sure. better sleep, um, you know. And so, I mean, it's worth a try for people to try. And we didn't start out at 18.6, it was more like 12.12. And then, you know, um, then I thought I was doing it right. And then I learned from Sia, I wasn't doing it right. So I had to rein it in and do better. And, um, and I, I just feel better doing that. Um, and so we're just sharing what works for us. And just exactly. to give you guys, to give you guys ideas that there's different ways um, to be able to do whole food plant-based there's always room for improvement you can try things uh you know you can try anything for like 30 days and see how you feel you're not making a lifetime commitment right but right. you can say yeah. yeah you can say hey maybe i'll um try this and see how it works for me i you know i i also feel like with the intermittent fasting it's easier to um maintain a healthy weight doing that too. I also, I feel better when I'm not constantly eating. Um, you know, I know there's some chat going on in the, in the um, chat feed about grazing versus eating meals. Um, I just feel better if I'm not always eating and my food tastes better when I go to have my meal and I have true hunger. I'm hungry. Ah, um, right. You know, that's like hunger is the best seasoning because yeah. when you're really Right when you're really hungry, no, sure. then food tastes the it best. All, it all tastes good. It all tastes good. And yeah, grazing or one big meal or two meals or three meals. Um, it's a, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, there are a lot of words out there about this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. The science isn't there. So when we wonder something, we go to the science. Um, a D girl has uh, raised something, and I'm really interested in what you're talking about uh, about some new research raising the risk of dying from heart problems by almost double. I haven't seen that study, so I would really love it if you could share that study, please, so that I can make sure so I can read it. Um, I like I, I read the studies, I want to see the parameters, I want to see the control group, I want to see it was it double blind, I want to see. What were they testing against? And, and then I can know whether or not that study um, is something that I find valid. But I can't comment, G-Girl. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know what to say because I haven't read it. But if you could give the link to the actual study so we could uh, check it out, 
Uh, that's really important. At 6D, we make sure the science backs up the words. That's that's definite. Yeah. Okay, so one more thing, um, and then we should go because I want to be responsible. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, wait, wait, G girl, you're not gonna believe this. I'm not on Instagram. She's being so it, it, it's being oh. so helpful at 60 lyrics on Instagram post. And it's the one I don't have Instagram. I'm so sorry. Oh boy. Oh, oh that's boy. so funny. Um Nola. But go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted you, Tammy. That's okay. Nola said I was just diagnosed with hyper thyroidism and all yes. the whole food plant-based info I see is for hypothyroidism. Any suggestions for me? I posted a link from Dr. Greger, a uh, video and uh, the best diet for both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. So the link is in there and uh, I hope you can see it. If not, um, it's, it's on his, on his website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, okay. Well, let's bring the guys back on so we can say thank you. And um, you're going to scoot over here and be close to me now. I magically appeared. Did you see that? <laughs> you did. You magically appeared. Um, uh -huh. Thank you guys so much for joining us and sharing your perspective. I think that's always, um, it's really helpful. So many people in the plant-based community, uh, there's a lot of females having YouTube channels and um, podcasts and that kind of thing. And it's really nice for the guys in the community to hear from uh, you and Dominic. So, you know, thank you for taking the time You're and welcome. sharing uh, your thoughts and what you do today. I think, you know, that goes a long way. It sounds to me like Dominic gets more desserts than I do. <laughs> it sounds like that to me. Okay, well, <laughs> this is about comparing. <laughs> it's kind of a thing. Like last night we had that, and he didn't mention it, but we had chocolate souffle for dinner because oh. I made these chocolate cake balls or chocolate cake cookies. They're they're about as big as your hand. And so I cut them in pieces and put them in a pan. And then I covered them with my chocolate sauce and then fresh berries on top of that and baked it at a low heat so it all melted together. But the thing is, the chocolate cookies, the main ingredient is red lentil. The chocolate pudding, the main ingredient is black bean. And the berries, the main ingredient was berries. So it was a pretty good meal, wouldn't you think? That's a good dinner. Yeah, it sounds delicious. So mm. you just need to write this down in a <laughs> recipe that I can follow. That's, I'm that's working on it. I'm working okay. on it. I'm starting a new series today. I'm working on it. I promise. Like, my, my do I need, wait, do I need to send you measuring cups and measuring spoons? She do you own them. measuring cups and measuring spoons? I, she won't use them. I do. I do. And I've started oh, so then, using them. Hang on. I'm okay. You wait. Tim, okay. you got to go to the website. I posted a recipe today. You're not going to believe it. Okay. I'm going to go check it out. Because Thea All sends right. me her recipes. And it's like an idea. And I'm like, <laughs> how much of that? Well, enough to make it, you know, well, have see, a good I, batter. I make dump <laughs> soup. And she makes dump cake, dump oats. Uh, yeah, you're talking about yeah, Thea. I do. Uh, so, food, yeah, you know, Liz, yeah, Vinette, all her for sure. Are dumb. I mean, uh, Vinette Thompson's in the chat. And girl, I know you can make it even better. You are an expert chef. So good to see you here. Liz, thank you for checking in as well. Okay, and Joan Smith, good to see you. Donna's here as well. I'm looking at everybody. Talking about guys, John Burns, thanks for hanging out, man. That's awesome. You know what I that mean? Because nice. like, you know, you know. It, there are a lot of us girlies here. So thanks for hanging with us and for all your information and comments. That was great. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Yeah, we, it. This was a really good um, session. So we will be back next Tuesday at the same time, 11 a.m. Pacific time. And um, next week, we're going to talk about weight loss tips. So um, that will be a really good um, discussion, I'm sure. So we hope you'll join us for that. Uh, we will have a link in the show notes. If you want to um, register to get all the extra the advanced material, advanced materials that SIA sends out on Monday, we um, will provide a link for you to go to 60 Living and register there. And then she puts together this wonderful collaboration of materials um, just to, to the, to the topic. Subject. Right. And so... Um, 
we will have that for you as well. Yeah, and now. you wanted to say, oh, it's in there That's now. That's what I was going to say. That I, I was able oh, to add great. all the yeah. to the show notes. Okay, uh, yeah. perfect. Great. Um, and of course, if you um, have questions that you want to ask us next week about weight loss tips, send an email. You can you can send an email in advance if you wish to Tammy at Nutmeg Notebook or see ya. Yeah, listen, if you have any registration problems, anything with the RSVP, if you didn't get your materials, um, you remember, you do have to register in time to get those materials. So if you registered a minute later than the registration closes, unfortunately, you missed it. So 11.59 Sunday p.m. Pacific time is you got to register to get the materials Monday morning. But um, if you have any issues whatsoever with the 60 website registering, how to get it done, what to do, please email me at balance at 60living.com. I'm sure it's in the notes uh, because I'm the one who can fix it. So uh, we'll, we'll get it done more quickly for you if you get in touch with me directly. That'd be great. Okay, perfect. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Plant Thanks, Living Dominic. Easy. Thank you, Dominic. Good to You're see you. Welcome. To be able to hang out with you. You guys hold on for a minute and we'll just say goodbye to the folks. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you could please give us a thumbs up. That helps our ratings here on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed yet to um, Nutmeg Notebook YouTube channel, subscribe, click on that bell. That's how you get notifications whenever we go live or we put up a um, upload a new video. And if you haven't subscribed to our blog, go to nutmegnotebook.com and subscribe there so that you'll get emails from us and follow um, Sia on 6D Living on Facebook and check out the website 6D Living as well. And we appreciate you guys all hanging with us and asking great questions. We will see you next week. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and, and stay, stay healthy, healthy one show at a time. I should say one <laughs> easy, plant based living show at a time. Okay. Same time, same place next week, folks. See you then. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you so much.